Twitter files. You know, the great irony of all of this is that belying the story of doxing and everything else happening on the platform, this was it. This was the major story yet to come out of the Twitter files. So we pulled the four most important things from Matt Taibbi's Twitter files drop, revealing FBI, DHS, and Intel cooperation with Twitter. Let's go ahead and put these on the screen. So number one was this. The Twitter files uh, showed the FBI subsidiary. Twitter personnel in the case went on to look for reasons to suspend accounts, including those from all literal small accounts which were jokes, including, quote, civic misinformation. And also, just to show you that this actually happened in two different directions, they also asked Twitter to review a blue-leaning account for a joke that was actually more obvious about <laughs> uh, about voter misinformation, quote-unquote. And the takeaway, as Taibbi says, is, quote, what most people think of as the deep state is a tangled collaboration of state agencies, private contractors, and sometimes state-funded NGOs. The lines become so blurred as to become meaningless. And just to give people an idea here, we're literally talking about very tiny, small accounts, which are basically shit posting about how the next uh, Wednesday, November 9th is election day. Yeah, they're like, hey, Republicans, right. get out and vote on Wednesday. Exactly. Get the joke. Funny. Right. Hilarious. And, yeah. It had three retweets <laughs> and the FBI is flagging this stuff to Twitter at the time of the election. Like, as Taibi said, he's like, don't you have other better stuff to do, like catching like sex predators or crime, I, 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 murder, uh, who planted the bomb on January 6th, what was going on on January, maybe covering up role in January 6th. There's so many different things that would be more productive uh, for these people to be doing. And they clearly have an army of folks, both in the FBI and inside the intelligence community, who are flagging tweets from like very low follower accounts arguably they have no influence really whatsoever. It's just clear and direct government censorship by acts, asking and requesting Twitter to take action. And in some cases, Crystal, what we're seeing with the latest drop of the Twitter files last night is they were even admonishing Twitter for not doing every single thing that they told them to and were demanding written explanations from the company. Wow. So much so that it even made Yoel Roth the guy who defends the Babylon B account getting taken down and the Hunter Biden laptop censorship, it made him uncomfortable wow. that they were demanding so much compliance. Wow. But of yeah. course they still did it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the same agency that apparently couldn't get yeah. their shit together to take down Larry Nasser after decades yeah, of you. abusing right. young gymnasts, even though they were tipped off to the fact that he was like criminally molesting young girls mm -hmm. over and over again, they somehow have time to find your stupid vote on Wednesday joke and flag this like it's some grave national security concern. And I think Matt puts it in the right context in that, listen, this, this capability starts with the 9-11 and the war on terror, right? And, you know, people looked at this sort of cooperation and it's like, okay, well, they're flagging ISIS accounts, they're flagging terrorists, they're flagging Al-Qaeda recruitment accounts. All right, well, we're comfortable with that. But then this gets expanded dramatically after you have the whole Russiagate insanity. Because now this idea of foreign interference in our elections means basically you can look to the domestic population of like, oh, well, who is a potential Russian collaborator? Who is spreading this election misinformation? And that's where this thing is really ultimately off to the races. And so he sort of tracks the way that this, you know, explodes because of Russiagate and the derangement that it inspired and the way that justified even further abuses of an expansion of security state power. Yep, absolutely. And uh, just to give you an idea, though, of what the actual response to this, again, this should be a huge scandal. Nobody even seems to be talking about it. Are actually some of the folks who are just outright defending the policy, Ted Lieu, uh, the congressman, being one of those, despite previously casting himself as some ACLU free speech defender. Let's take a listen to what he said. So recently, he put out a statement on social media saying what he's going to focus on is Hunter Biden's laptop. Actually, it's even more irrelevant than that. He's actually concerned about what Twitter was saying about Hunter, Hunter Biden's laptop. 
What Ted is talking about there after a prolonged uh, speech on social media and more is basically trashing Matt Taibbi, Elon, and others for even bothering about this story. It also reminds me of the time that we interviewed him, Crystal, on Rising, and we asked him about whether he cared that Hunter Biden was serving on the Burisma board, and he said, well, people serve on boards all the time, and it is what it is. Basically saying it just doesn't, didn't care really whatsoever about the entire scandal. So, I mean, I guess consistent since because coming an apparatchik, but it just goes to show that a lot of people are either ignoring or just outright defending the fusion of this. And the fact that they were flagging those shit posts from people saying that they want Republicans to vote on November 9 shows you how absurd this entire thing is. Why should the nation's premier law enforcement agency be worried about this? I think unequivocally, we should all be like, no. Absolutely not. And then for Twitter itself to, in many of these cases, take these down, never having done so in the past, like according to their own rules, yeah. shows you who's in the driver's seat. Well, and according to the reporting of Ken Klippenstein, um, what was the name of the terrible, the disinformation governance yes, board or something that's it. like that, yeah. that, you know, there was a big public outcry over and ultimately they're backed off of like, oh, okay, we're, we're not going to do that. You know, what they really did is they just did it more quietly. <laughs> they didn't really not do that thing. They just decided like, we're not going to publicize it. We're just going to internally move forward with our plans and have a less sort of, um, less polemical or less publicly uh, firebrand of, uh, of a head to, to lead this effort. So really important information that ultimately is exposed here. And, uh, you know, in part because of what Elon has himself done over the weekend with all of his insanity, it's mm -hmm. really flying under the radar, even though I think these were some of the most important revelations we got out of the Twitter files. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, the major takeaway here is we now have the initial Twitter files uh, revelation of weekly meetings. We now have specific examples of FBI involvement. We have now examples of FBI agents browbeating Twitter staff to do everything that they want them to do. What more do you need to show? And also, I mean, Elon, I guess credit for releasing this, but he needs to also show us proof that this artifice has been dismantled, that they're not gonna comply in future Correct. with future types of law enforcement uh, requests because we have no idea what's happening even right, right now, now with the staff. Yeah, there very go. good point, very All good right. point. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just wanna give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only, for you.